Watching a movie made for kids means that you need to suspend your disbelief a little bit. Maybe Elsa and Anna could have just talked the whole thing out. Maybe Ariel could have just written Eric a note explaining all the mermaid stuff. I mean, maybe it is weird that Scar didn't just kill Simba when he had the chance. But if you're watching a kids movie, you need to put those thoughts aside and just focus on the story and the lessons that you're supposed to learn. But I'm not gonna do that. Instead, I'm going to explore this idea. The dragons in How to Train Your Dragon would have destroyed the village of Burke, and there's no way that Vikings and dragons are ever gonna live together in peace. So if you've never seen the dragon movies or TV shows, the basic premise is this. A bunch of Vikings live on an island called Burke, and they're in constant war with these dragons that also live on the island until this kid named Hiccup befriends a dragon named Toothless, and ho oh, hooray, They've now they're friends with dragons and the dragons live in harmony. The movies are really good, the TV show is fine. I, I really love these stories, and don't get me started on the soundtrack. It is so good. You could fold your laundry to that song and it would be an amazing adventure. Obviously dragons don't exist. Or do they? They don't. <laughs> but we can assume some things about them based on animals that do exist. I'm talking about lizards. I'm talking about reptiles. I'm talking about real life dragons, people. Come on, these things are crazy. Reptiles have a bad rap for being pretty unevolved. We even use reptilian language to describe our own worst characteristics. A murderer can be cold-blooded with apathy. When we give into our base desires, we say we're listening to our reptilian brain. Reptiles in general have a reputation for being unintelligent and instinctual. So now imagine introducing a giant flying one into a Viking village. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. That sounds like a terrible idea. To be fair, recent research into reptilian cognition has unearthed some interesting ideas about how intelligent these animals actually are. Researchers have conducted problem-solving experiments with everything from tortoises to monitor lizards, and in general they've found that these animals perform much better than expected. Even if we consider that these dragons are intelligent and that they have the cognitive ability to get along with the Vikings, the actual impact of their presence on the community would be staggering. Imagine you're a citizen of an Iron Age civilization. Now imagine you're not just being asked to keep yourself and your family alive, but also dozens, if not hundreds, of these giant flying monsters that need a lot of food. Just look at the first episode of Dragons Riders of Burke, one of the spin-off TV series. In the episode, titled How to Start a Dragon Academy, we see the dragons causing all kinds of havoc, knocking stuff over, lighting things on fire, and more importantly, eating a lot of crops and livestock. The solution in the episode is essentially like, nah, eh, like, it's what they're gonna do. Like, learn to live with it, we'll, we'll adapt. This is a nice sentiment, but it's not at all a sustainable solution to the dragon problem. So while dragons may be intelligent, their presence is still a major problem for the people of Burke. Obviously there's no way to test how this would actually play out in the real world, but we can do the next best thing. So let's leave this void that we're in and let's go do a kind of simulation. We're here at the Liberty Science Center in Jersey City with our friend Turbo and a couple of other dragons to find out just how much destruction they would cause if unleashed into a Viking village. Guys, this could get ugly. Not like you, cute little fella. <laughs> Well folks, there you have it. If you're looking for an answer to the question, how do I train my dragon? 
I can only give you this simple piece of advice. Just don't. There's no dragons anyway.